Welcome explorers, my name is Zia from the Bobo Park Cultural Partnership and we are excited to have you join us today for the special virtual explorer experience with the Museum of Photographic Arts. Joining us today we have Chantal, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us what inspired Boba to create Photo Club and what the program is about overall? So we created Photo Club as a way to stay connected to kids and families while our museum remains closed and our outreach programs are on hold. We put a lot of thought into the unique format of Photo Club because we wanted our virtual programming to remain true to what makes our regular programming fun and engaging. It had to be driven by hands-on learning, inspire experimentation and creative thinking, and result in images that are as unique as the individual learners. This means that they are process-oriented rather than product-oriented. We focus on how to make, not what to make. Um, so how does Photo Club work? So Photo Club is actually a collection of photo challenges. Each challenge introduces a couple of different photo techniques or approaches and prompts the learner to combine them into a final image. You can go through at your own pace, take inspiration from what you find most interesting, and take your time to create an image responding to the challenge. You can then choose to share your image through our social media or use the provided form to submit your photo for feedback from both as educators. Your image may even be added to the digital gallery of example images for future learners. That's really fun. So who is Photo Club for and how does MOBA prioritize accessibility? Photo Club is absolutely free and open to everyone. The opportunity for feedback from our educators is free as well, but is provided specifically for youth learners. Also, little to no special equipment is required. Anything that can take photos works great, including smartphones or even built-in laptop cameras. Programs like Photo Club and MOPA's other youth programs are important because they help kids increase their confidence in expressing their ideas, and they encourage creative thinking. Does MOPA have other programs available for families? We do. So MOPA holds an annual jury youth exhibition, which invites youth in K-12 throughout the county to submit photographic artworks responding to a given theme. Entries are selected by a jury of professionals and educators to be presented at the museum in a special exhibition. You can visit our website at mopa.org forward slash yx for more information. Also, we're excited to be bringing our summer camps back this year. We're busy planning our fun and creative camps for our kids going into grades 4 through 12. Camp themes range from stop motion animation to experimental photography and lots in between. They always include lots of time outside and unexpected takes on what photography can be. So we'll be checking out our challenge titled Focus on Foreground, which is accessible to all levels of experience and challenges the learner to use the foreground as part of a creative composition, while also practicing one of the elements of art presented in one of our short, fun resource videos. It's a great intro challenge and a great foundation for building your photo skills. Hi guys, Megan here, and thank you for joining us for another episode of MOPA's Through My Lens. Today, we are going to be talking about using foreground in your images. So the foreground is whatever is closest to your camera, and the background are things that are really far away from the camera. Today, we're going to be talking about how you can place something in the foreground of your image to obstruct your subject. An obstruction is something that blocks or gets in the way of your subject and changes the image entirely. As you guys just saw in the last clip, this is my friend Christy, and she's going to help us demonstrate how to use obstruction in the foreground. Once you find an area that you like, place your subject behind the other obstructions, and you can move your camera around to get a really cool angle. So for me, the most important thing is that Christy's face is in focus, so I'm going to be tapping on her face to focus my camera there, and that will make the palm fronds out of focus. And if I move farther back, there are more things obstructing her face. And if I move closer, there are less things obstructing her face. Let's take things over to Chantel and Anna to see their take. Thanks, Megan. I'm Chantel from MOPA. This is my daughter, Anna. And today we are going to play with handheld obstructions to create some unique images. So we've gathered some objects from around our house that we think might look really cool. We have some like fake plants, 
Um, some decorative sculptural objects that were kind of interesting. This uh, fiber optic light, night light, and then some lace from a dress. So we're just gonna go and experiment. We played with using these objects as frames or to create interesting shapes around our subject. Some ideas work better than others, but that's okay. What cool foregrounds and compositions will you try? Thanks for watching another episode of MOPA's Through My Lens. If you try this out at home, be sure to tag MOPA SD on Instagram and Twitter and give this video a thumbs up. We'll be posting new videos every week. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll see you next time. Bye! Hi, Chantel. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. We do have a first question here. Someone wrote, awesome to hear about camps. Will they be in person or virtual? I'm also very excited to be um, having our camps back at MOPA. So they are going to be in-person camps. We are running week-long camps and they will be half day from nine to one. That's really exciting. Do you guys have any news yet as far as reopening? Our intended reopening date as of right now is April 16th. So uh, we have moved as a county into the red tier. We're really excited about that and hope we stay. Um, so that's our plan. So unless you know the world shuts down again, please come see us uh, April 16th and beyond. We will be opening um, with limited hours and days initially. So we're just gonna be open Friday through Sunday uh, from 11 to four. How can focus make a difference with foreground composition? Well, that's an excellent question. So you have a lot of choices when you're using focus as well as objects in front of your subject and behind your subject. So if you use what we call a shallow depth of field, meaning that the area in focus in your image is very narrow, very limited, you can use that focus um, to magnify whatever you choose in your image. So you can focus on your subject which would throw your foreground and your background out of focus, or you can focus on your foreground, which throws your subject out of focus and makes it a little bit more mysterious. I love the photos that you took with your daughter. They look so much fun. What are some of your favorite challenges? Oh my gosh. So all of them are amazing. Um, the foreground one is a lot of fun and it's fantastic because it's kind of, um, you know, basic skills. Anybody can jump in there, um, you know, even if you've never picked up a camera before, although I'm sure most of us have at this point, you know, with our smartphones and everything. Um, but we have more um, challenging challenges. There's one about contemporary art that I think is fantastic and it helps um, the participant think more conceptually about their images. Another question here, what special exhibits will there be when you first reopen? Excellent question. So um, our opening exhibition will be um, an exhibition uh, called K-MOPA. And what it is, um, is a, an exhibition that's coming to us from our um, sister museum in Japan, which is really exciting. And it actually focuses on the early work um, in the careers of photographers and some extremely well-known photographers will be featured in this exhibition as well as photographers we're not quite as familiar with that are from Japan. And the idea is that these photographers create their most creative, creative and kind of outlandish photos um, early on in their career when they're still experimenting with their style. So it's really fun to see um, how their careers grew uh, over time, especially those photographers that we're more familiar with. And we're also, um, not quite when we open, but following very shortly thereafter, we're gonna be opening our annual youth ex exhibition. Um, so we actually had two since we've been closed for a year. So we're combining both exhibitions into one big exciting exhibition that are focusing on the themes of growing up um, and space and many interpretations of the idea of space. I can't wait to be there in person. Um, and I think this is a really cool question. Um, when I got to meet Chantal, I found out that you were a photographer at first and then went into film. So I think this is a pretty cool question for you. Do you have a favorite type of camera and what do you recommend for a starting photographer? You know, that's a fantastic question. My focus when I was in photography was fine art and experimental photography. 
So um, the equipment that I used was never really very important to me. Um, I, I taught a class at UCSD Extension for years um, about uh, taking pictures with the worst kind of camera equipment that you can find. Um, and the idea was to um, drive the communication of ideas, you know, and so it, learning a visual language. So, you know, what you take a picture with doesn't even matter. So you can use your cell phone and you can still create really imaginative images. I hope that helps. <laughs> Is there an activity that you really enjoy or that you recommend for um, kids to take in, in camp? Yeah, well, in camp, my gosh. So our camp um, classes cover such a wide range of different types of activities. So this summer, um, we're featuring themes from aesthetic selfies and portraits. Um, you know, so kind of that like Instagram kind of look that um, that all of our kids are totally into. I got the inspiration to call it aesthetic because my daughter uses that word all the time. She's an eighth grader. Um, and then we're also doing a lot of stop motion animation this summer. Um, we're doing experimental photography for our older campers, our seventh to 10th graders. Um, we're doing a um, kind of adventure around the, the, the park, you know, more of like a documentary and scavenger hunt um, style camp. Um, really all, all kinds of different stuff. It's really exciting. Um, one of my favorite activities uh, for kids, for adults, for anybody, just to kind of train their brain in, in taking um, imaginative photos is to go out with an adjective in mind and try to capture that adjective in an image. Do you have a favorite, um, any favorite spots for shooting pictures in San Diego? This person might get inspired to go out. <laughs> I love that. So every place in San Diego is worth photographing. You know, it really depends on what side of San Diego you're trying to capture. Um, if you're looking for really beautiful scenery, obviously there's lots of parks, Belbo Park, of course. Um, you know, a lot of beautiful landscapes around San Diego, all kinds of different hikes that you can take um, and to go capture some natural photos. Um, but even walking, you know, through the streets of all the different neighborhoods of San Diego, you're going to capture, you know, little, little pieces of life, you know, and those are just as interesting and beautiful to look at. Do you have a favorite photographer? <laughs> Everybody we exhibit at MOPA. <laughs> now, you know what? I, I'm not really, I'm not really partial to a, a specific photographer. Um, I really like um, contemporary experimental photography, you know, and we've displayed quite a bit of that um, in our galleries. I like to see creative perspectives and, and I appreciate creative perspectives. So, you know, I like to keep my mind open. Do you have a favorite exhibit that um, is coming up that's opening up that you're just like stoked about. Yeah, my absolute favorite exhibit that we ever do at the museum is the youth exhibition. I mean, they it blows me away every year. Um, the the creative perspectives that our our students around San Diego County come up with, you know, how they interpret our different themes. You know, we're putting the exhibition together and we come up with these themes and, you know, we, we kind of have an assumption of like the different ways the kids are going to interpret it and what kind of pictures we're going to end up seeing. Always surprises me every year. They, they think of ways to interpret and visualize these ideas beyond what I could have ever imagined. There's so much talent. Um, I've seen some of those of exhibits and I'm just blown away. They're amazing. Yeah. Um, another um, question and comment. I love the storytelling element of photography. Is there anyone you feel is a great visual storyteller? You guys are putting me on the spot with like coming up with names. Um, <laughs> um, you know, not that I can think of right offhand, you know, and I really wish that, you know, I'd given this some thought beforehand so I could like come with some ideas. Um, visual storytellers, gosh, there's so many. Um, if you are looking for inspiration, I think that this is probably going to be the best way to go is to go onto our website and we have our photo 101 program. Um, they're really short videos. They're usually like two to five minutes or so. And they cover, um, Kevin, who's our, um, adult programs manager hosts these programs and he's so knowledgeable about 
all the, you know, all the contemporary work that's out there, all the big name photographers, um, and he covers these kinds of themes and showcases different photographers. So go and check that out. It's mopa.org. It's Photo 101 is the program. You can watch it and just dig on all different kinds of photographers from all different perspectives. Then we have one more question here. Do you think you will have film festivals again? I absolutely think we're going to have film festivals again. I mean, I think they may roll out um, in, in different kinds of ways in the near future. Eventually, I'm hoping that we're going to host them back in our theater. Um, we did watch, um, host the Human Rights Watch Film Festival fairly recently, and that was um, all online. It was all digital, and it was handled beautifully. Um, and gave the participants the opportunity to select films, you know, and, and watch multiple films like they hadn't been able to before. And it also um, created kind of a broader access, you know, for people to participate because they didn't need to be within close driving distance of the museum um, to take part in it. So you could watch from wherever you were, you know, and you usually had several days, you know, to watch it as it matched your schedule. So there's some kind of benefits that have come out of, um, being virtual, but we miss our theater, you know, it's a, it's a very unique experience. So, um, the short answer is yes, we will do it again. It is a really beautiful theater. <laughs> it's small, but it's still great. Um, do you yes. have, <laughs> you have volunteer opportunities at MOPA? We do, yeah. So if you um, go onto our website, you can um, find information about the volunteer program and you can put an application. We, we use volunteers all over the museum for all kinds of different work, um, you know, from administrative things to helping out our exhibition team um, to working with our education programs, our summer camps, um, you name it, pretty much everything. We, we always need help. Thank you so much, Chantal, and thank you, Explorers and MOPA members, for joining us today. I really hope you all enjoyed this Explorer experience, and we can't wait to have more with you. For more Bobo Park content, you can visit culturalpartnership.org. Again, that's culturalpartnership.org. Thank you. We hope to see everybody at MOPA. Take care, everyone.